welcome and welcome to the present match day wednesday in the champions league bayern hosting arsenal at the alliance arena it should be an interesting match am i very confident mm, we'll find out am i very concerned we'll find out so as you get into the show uh be kind enough be civil enough to strike the like button if you're yet to subscribe please subscribe or consider subscribing and make sure you turn on your notification bell very very important let me make sure the audio is great from the side let me make sure everything is working well let's see let's see let's see i am looking forward to this match uh I do not share the pessimism that is going around by some of the Arsenal fans. Oh, what can we do at the Alliance Arena? We might lose the match. If you think you are going to lose the match, I can help you. I can help you if you are stuck on stupid or stuck on pessimism. I just think both Bayern and Arsenal have equal chances. It's 2 2 first leg. There is no more away goal rule. So I expect us, I expect us today to do something. Now, I'm not saying guarantee we're going to win the match. And I'm, I, I on the flip side, I'm not saying guarantee we're going to lose the match. It's equal chances for both matches. It should be a great one for the fans, for the opposition, and for everybody to enjoy. Shout out to Mr. Ifosa. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir, to you, Mr. Ifosa. I hope you're doing fine this morning. And I hope you're looking forward to this match in the Champions League. I'm excited. I know I've been seeing uh, a lot of the, the reports this morning. People being concerned. People saying, oh, can us not do it? Can it not do it? Why don't you wait? In the next few hours, the answer will be given to all of us to see. I think us have a great chance of moving through. I think Bayern, I still maintain, Bayern collectively are not as strong as they used to be. But individually, they have key players that can hurt us. And if we can negate and neutralize that, we have a greater chance of progressing to the semi-finals. I saw, I saw the match yesterday between Atletico, the defensive team of Atletico versus Dortmund. I saw Dortmund did to them. Uh, we saw the match between PSG versus Barcelona. So there is a great opportunity for Arsenal to go to Bayern. It is not insurmountable. I, <laughs> I get it. A lot of you are still reeling from the fact that we lost to Aston Villa. Are you bitter? You angry? You angry like this guy? Let, let me show you. You guys are angry like this guy. In match fixing, you just can't. He's doing it on purpose. He can't even control the ball. He's the worst footballer I've ever seen. Please, Smithro, get that. Oh my! Are you guy? Are you watching this guy play football? Title. That that has a lot of you. A lot of our uh, overly pessimistic because natural. Let's see, it, it's coming to my knowledge, and the more I do this YouTube thing and take, uh, 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 I understand YouTube should be fun sometimes, but I'm seeing a pattern. Most yeah, there is a. What I say is, a, a, she, is it the right appropriate terminology? We this is a a loud or is a loud minority of fans who pretend to enjoy when we win. Which I, I said the word pretend because they don't enjoy it. But when we lose, you can see the animosity. You can see the jealousy. You can see the fact that they are unreasonably angry when we lose or when we draw. It's like they are waiting for something to happen. Even when we are winning, they pretend to be happy. But immediately we drop the ball with a draw or with a loss. You see the real people in them. Like, come on. One loss in 2024 and everybody getting crazy. One one loss. <laughs> now, I understand the emotionality of the game. You can be angry at that time. I was angry on Saturday. Sorry. What is Saturday? On Sunday. Right? I was angry on Sunday. Uh, the way we, we, we lost that game at home in the context of the title race. We shouldn't be doing that. I understand. But put it in perspective and think about it. Like, okay, we move. We don't have time to be talking. There's a match on, on Wednesday against Bayern. It's time to just dust off our stuff and try and try and recover on, on Wednesday. You can't continue to be talking and crying and moaning over something that you cannot change. The result is the result. You can't change it. Keep it moving. It's two points behind Man City. It's not done and dusted. It is not done and dusted. It can still be retrieved. But guess what? A lot of you are still stuck on that match. Come on, man. Grow up. Grow the F up. We are playing Bayern. In my opinion, we have a team that can go to the, to the Alliance Arena and win. We can go to the Alliance Arena and win. 
So, like, I get it. It's normal to be apprehensive because there are a lot of writing on that match. It is normal. You are human. To be apprehensive, even games that which we've been winning, it, there'll be a tad, like a, a modicum of apprehension in you because you're human. But to make it seem as if we, we are going with a, a very bad team to Bayern, we're going to be wild, we're going to beat him. Let, let's stop it. Let us stop it. I am sure the Bayern fans and the Bayern players are kind of skeptical and looking at that side of the side, that, knowing that if they are not on their A game, they can lose too. And that's why looking at Bayern like, okay, these guys, they came to the Emirates last week, right? They hit on, on a few counters. They are dangerous. Both teams are good teams. Just that I just believe if we take our chances and we are creative enough, we should be beating the Bayern team. The Bayern team, they've lost two key players in case they call at the weekend to an injury and they lost Gennabry at the Emirates to the hamstring injury. Those are key players for them. So I'll be able to, for them to perpetrate their counter-attacking uh, plan that they might want to deploy today again. So they have two key, play, uh, two key players out. We know um, uh, Mola is a player, he's a geriatric, he's not going to cost us. And we know Harry Kane will be looking for his customary, traditional penalty. Hopefully we don't allow it to happen today. So, and I think defensively, we've not fallen off. Let's not overly react because we've considered, uh, two, we considered two goals against Bayern. we considered two goals in Gaston Villa. Suddenly, Soliba and Gabriel are falling off the perch. Count. <laughs> human beings are human beings. You do 99 things right and you do one thing wrong. Suddenly, all the 99 you've done, people forget about it. Suddenly, Gabriel and Soliba are horrible. Suddenly, they've fallen off the perch. Is, is this what we are doing now? Is this what we are now doing now? Really? Is this what is this where we are? Now, I cannot control what you believe or, or what you don't want to believe. I still stand by. We have a great chance to go to Bayern and win and win well. Even though we don't win well, a smash and grab, I will take it. Anything to win. We saw how... My, 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 you won the, the Champions League in 1999. We saw how Liverpool came from three goals down to win the Champions League uh, a few years ago. We saw, we saw how Chelsea won it through penalties. We've seen teams who did not deserve to win the Champions League win the Champions League without playing well. So sometimes it's not necessarily how you play, just get it done. Today, I would take an ugly victory at Bayern. I don't care because nobody cares. The history books do not detail how ugly the victory people don't people won't read through the fine prints. You know, they're asking, did you win it or not? For me, go to the Allianz Arena and win. Just go there and win. Most Arsenal fans are flip flops. Exactly. Shout out to you, Mr. Ifosa. Most of Arsenal fans are flip flops. They, they don't stand for anything, they don't believe in anything. They just go by the win and go by the popular narrative. So we can go to the Alliance Arena and win. And um, I'm happy that we saw Odega in the open training session. He looks like he might be fit for the match, even though Ateta said in the press conference yesterday that uh, he's a bit sick. Uh, but hopefully he can recover today to be fit enough for the match. I think he will play today's match. I'll, I'm hoping maybe we could play party today because we will need party's passing ability and creativity, creativity in that midfield because uh, we've seen that there is nobody in that team that gives uh in between the line passes like party rice i love part i love rice so much but we know his limitations if we're going to be actually 100 percent objective about rice we know uh passes in between the line is not his strength uh creative passes not his strength defensively it's one of the best defensive missions you can have available defensively but offensively uh it's kind of lacking i just hope that uh we can party can do something now like <laughs> <laughs> it comes in. It was part of the legs. That's that's the scary thing. That's why I use a qualifier of hope because in the last few times I've seen Pate, the, he's looking like the legs are gone. But for one match, maybe he might have the energy. Maybe he might just have the energy of this match because we need all the creativity we can to actually beat Bayern. I think we, if we can get the creative part of the match going, we should be able to beat Bayern. The reason why we struggle a little bit is because sometimes when Odegaard is stifled, when Odegaard is maxed, we don't have any other creative person in that in that midfield when Odega is being stifled. So that 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 that's my concern for today. And Marcelino needs to step up. He has been having iffy games uh, for the last uh, few weeks since he came out from his foot injury. He hasn't been the same. It's time for Marcelino to step up. Saka, please. All those theatrics of uh, uh, always feigning injuries. This is not time for that. We need to be business like today. Take our chances once they come. We cannot afford to miss uh, chances. Bayern will not afford us countless chances. Bayern will not afford us limitless chances. When the chances come, 
we have to take them today. We have to take them. They don't have uh, Alpha, Alpha, Alpha Davis in the defense. They have Christy Coleman. They have Gnabry. So when we have those chances, we have to be clinical. We'll start on top. Is it Jesus or Kai? I would prefer Kai because Jesus sometimes does this over dribbling, over holding on to the ball sometimes that actually st um, st stops the fluidity of our attack. Now, that can work on, on the opposite side, him beating one or two players to open space uh, like he did for this for the equalizer against Bayern uh, at the end of the last time. But sometimes he does it too much. There's time for everything. But I just think he does it too much that he affects the flow and the fluidity of the game. So but on the flip side, Jesus has a very good Champions League record. But I'd rather go for what has been done and, and, and what has been tested, which is the fluidity when Kai Havas leads the line. So we need to use the strength of Kai Havas today, the strength of Saka and Martinelli. The midfield has to be on point. Will it be Pate or will it be uh, Jorginho with Rice? We know Rice is going to be playing today, but will it be with Pate or with Jorginho? It's, look, it's looking like it might be with Jorginho because uh, Jorginho did not even start uh, the weekend game against Aston Villa. So, but if Pate is fit enough, I would rather go for Pate because he has a special way of moving the ball, driving the ball, passing the ball, uh, dropping the shoulder, beat one or two man. When Jorginho can't beat players like that, he doesn't. Have, that is not his game. So we need uh, to be on our A game defensively. I am not worried about our defensive shape up. I just think that against Bayern and against Aston Villa, we're just a bit unfortunate, which can happen. And those teams took their chances. So I am not worried defensively. I expect Gabriel Soliba to stand up to any challenges Bayern will pose. I expect them to be most corny this time. We know Harry Kane will look for those penalties. We know Bayern players are quality and they can do damage. So we have to be very alert. Now, Raya has been fantastic signing to us. But we saw he was part of the mistake uh, by giving Bayern the gift of the first goal last time ryan needs to understand that we know he, he plays higher with the team but he needs to manage his movement properly he needs to read the game with the defenders properly there is no room for error today because i hope <laughs> either if we lose today the meltdown will be worse than the meltdown the mini meltdown we we had on sunday we cannot afford i guess we cannot afford to lose because you have no right to a divine victory but we have to work for, work for your victory I, I just we can't <laughs> we don't we can't we can't we can't we can't, we can't just lose today we have because we have the players to actually get this victory even like alias we cannot because the meltdown will be worse than what we've been seeing in the last few days so i, I believe in my team um Mikel Ateta, i believe in him to pick the right players for the team and when it comes to the left back the debate of zinchenko is horrible which i see I'm not here to defend Zinchenko. We all know Zinchenko can be clumsy. We know Zinchenko, Zinchenko can be good on his day, right? But we know he has that clumsiness in him, which, which is part of his game. But the way some of you are overly making him as if Zinchenko is not a footballer, like, let's not do that. Let's not do that. Especially if we might not have the op option of, of a fit Tomiyasu. We do not understand or we do not know uh why Tomiyasu is not has not been starting even though he has been training for almost the last one month we don't understand why he has not been starting but i'm sure Mikel Ateta will play Tomiyasu if he's fit enough to start so that means there's something there we are not being told why Tomiyasu is not starting for me i prefer Tomiyasu to start at left back uh today on in today's match but if he's not fit enough i'm sorry i'm taking his Zinchenko over a key view. you might not like that but that's just the objective truth I am taking Izinchenko as a left back over a Kivio today because we saw how Mr. Kivio struggled with the pace of the Bayern wingers. So it depends on if the uh, Kivio, uh, what's his name, Tomiyasu is fit. If Tomiyasu is fit, he, 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 he starts. But if Tomiyasu is not fit, I'm sorry, some of you might not like it when the starting level comes out. Zinchenko has to play. It is what it is. It is what it is. Uh, we have to win, but it's understandable. The team is suffering, fatigue also. We have been unbearable on these guys. Sometimes fans need to calm down. You know, sensible fans like you, Mr. Fosa, are not the mainstream, unfortunately. You think people will apply common sense these days, but common sense does not is not mainstream. Common sense is not what people want. People want to be erratic. People want to be 
to be to, to to mock things people want to do taste tasteless banter uh, what i call in my opinion so here's what it is like we can see that that's why i didn't overly react i was angry which is natural to be angry at the result but after a bit of time like these guys have given us joy this year a first loss we haven't our first loss in april since january we've not lost any game our first loss and I'm, people are going to go into this mode now i just think people are just irrational people are not just fair and i understand and a lot of people are being provoked by clowns like this let me play one more time but i've been provoked by remember the name kai havers the giraffe leads arsenal to me you see what i said kai havers the giraffe <laughs> the same kai havers that kept us in the title race it is, it's so funny that these people mock and smell kai havers name but the objective truth remains that without Kai Havas, there is no title race. Like, there, there is no title race, objectively. Nobody can convince me the, the data is there, the empirical evidence is there. Without Kai Havas, the Asna will not be in a title race because Jesus has been injured for most of the season. Right? There's no title race. But he's a giraffe. But it, it's horrible. He can't trap a ball. It's just narrative. It's, it's, it's unfortunate. This is how what we have to deal with with fan base. There's this the the loud minority of people who shout the, the most who push this kind of narrative, unhealthy narrative. I just hope Asna can win today. So people like him, people like Curtis Shaw, people like Turkish can be shut down because for a long time they push narrative, they control the narrative, they are the biggest stars, they are the big, big, big people listen to them without using their brain and using context and nuances is unfortunate, but people like that have to be shut down. You cannot. See, nobody has the divine or audacity to win all the, all the time. Now, at the same time, I want to win. I have standards. I want to win. But I can understand that sometimes you will not win all the games. Even Prime Barcelona didn't win all the games. Like, Prime Barcelona didn't win all the games. Chelsea didn't win all the games. Like, we act as if losing is not part of gamesmanship. It's part of it. You just want to win more than you lose and draw, which is fair. That's why I went, I'll go back to 2024. We lost one game. Are you going to have a meltdown? Going to rip into the players? The rip to Mikalatel actually to be sacked over one game? It is what it is, but uh, hopefully today, today's match day at Bayern, we can you know, uh, bounce back from that uh, on uh, on every defeat we had uh, at at, uh, at the Emirates against Aston Villa. Bounce back, like I said, I don't care about the man of the win. If it's a smash and grab or a comprehensive victory, Aston just have to win and we all shine to the semi-finals. So once we get to the semi-finals, I have a sneaky feeling maybe, maybe this might just be the year of us now winning. The UEFA Champions League. So I, I'm, I'm looking forward to the game. It should be very, very interesting. I'm excited, even though I'm kind of apprehensive. I'm having mixed feelings and mixed emotions about the game. Uh, but I, I think we can do it. I just think we can do it. I think uh, we have the quality of the players. Confidence might be kind of iffy, but the quality is still there. The quality is still there. I, I, you can't convince me. The quality is still there. Uh, suddenly, all the guys have not gone bad. Kai have not gone bad. Martin have not gone. All three they might be having a little bit of confidence issues, but the quality is still there. Because look at, see, look like, how many games have we won in the league? Those are the data and the evidence. Sometimes we, we suspend our brain and not look at data and evidence to what we are saying. Look at the data. Look at the evidence. Like it's unfortunate that we are we are competing against two very good teams in Liverpool and Man City, even they are not as brilliant as it is to be, but they still have quality and star those star players in their team that can pull them out of very uh unsavory situations. Unlike us, we need our team to have a collective uh grand effort to win. But Liverpool can rely on Salah sometimes for moments of brilliance. We see that uh for Man City, they can rely on De Bruyne for moment of brilliance, Haaland for moment of brilliance, uh, Bernardo Silva for moment of brilliance. How many players in the Arsenal ranks can give you that genuine moment of brilliance? We don't have so much of that. We rely on our on our collective quality all the time. So we are fighting against two juggernauts, not because team wise they are extremely better than us, but they have players who can come up with moment of brilliance. So, guys, we need to put things in perspective. We just need to put in perspective uh yes losing is part of the game but that's not tend to lose important games at important times uh like villa no i disagree with you i disagree with you you are taking you are taking away the context of the losing no 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 like it's too yeah if we lost against villa 
nobody expected that. We were all disappointed. At the same time, at the same time, it just two points of uh Man City. Man City lost against Southampton last year. The people, the people cry about it. Oh, the mighty Man City have lost games they shouldn't be losing. What can I say if Man City this season have not drew against teams they should be drawing? Let, let's apply the right context, guys. Let's apply the, the standard you apply to Man City, apply to Arsenal. Man City have lost games to teams they should be losing to or drawing to. And same thing for Arsenal, same thing for Liverpool. Liverpool just lost Crystal Palace too. Why people not making a huge force of it? So let, let, come on, let, let's, let's, let, let's not do that. You are in the toxic positive bracket. You are, I, I think you're insane. I'm going to call it, you. I, you are, I think you're insane. I think you're insane. I think you're insane. The world toxic positive. Like you put this in perspective. One loss in 2024. I'm toxic. I'm toxic positive. I think you, these are the kinds of fans that make it difficult for logic to work. These are, these are the kind of fans. I'm toxic positive because I'm putting things in perspective. I'm using my brain. One loss. The tight race is not over. We understand Man City have the advantage. But it's not over yet. But I'm toxic positive. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> we, we, we've lost value for common sense. You, you see, people like you just want to be angry for being angry sick. We, we, I, I know your type. You just see, even when Arsenal is winning, you're looking for when Arsenal is going to draw and Arsenal is going to lose so that you can come out with your vitriol. You might not be happy with life. You're not, you're not happy with life. I'm talking to be positive because I'm asking you to take things into perspective. I'm asking you that it's two points behind Man City. It's not yet over, but I'm toxic positive. One loss in 2024. <laughs> oh Lord, jeez! <laughs> but City didn't lose. What matters? At the, as the league finished, as the league finished. So when Arsenal was still on top last week, I'm sure you make this kind of commentary. It just shows the nature of humans. Just say you do not. You do not. You are not. See. How do I put this thing? Just say you just love to be angry. I know your type. You just want to be angry. <laughs> you just want to be angry. The city started in August, not in January. Don't do that. What am I doing? By that logic, the season has not ended. So why are you getting angry? You, you, some of you don't think for your type. The season has not ended. Six more games to go. City have not won the league. Why are you angry? So if City loses or draws, I'll go, on, go back on top. Will you refrain all this nonsense you're saying? Will you refrain from all this nonsense you're typing? If, see, I will send you the link. Come up, let's have a conversation. So it's just so massive. I'm trying to be, to hush the vibe. I will send you the link and come on, on screen. Let's have this conversation right here. Since it started in August, not in January. Like, come on, let's not be silly. Just not be silly with this, this narrative. Oh, this is a this is a, oh, I'm sure you are part of the, the academic graduate from the AFTV. We just love to be angry for uh, you just want to be angry for angry's sake. Like the season has not ended. We're all disappointed about the loss against Aston Villa. We should be as Arsenal fans. We want to win the league. Like, why are you angry? I said we've won loss in. 2024. That's a fantastic record, whether you like it or not. The, that's, that's, that's evidence of fantastic record, whether you like it or not. <laughs> oh, Lord, no. But I don't like it to be angry. I like to win trophies. Is that so bad? No, no. So I don't like to win trophies. The difference between me and you is that I put things in perspective. I'm saying enough to build things in fact. I want to win the, all the biggest trophies, but at the same time, I understand that Man City are a strong team. Man City have experience. Man City have players. They've been investing in that squad for the last 10 years, and they are seeing the reward on investment for the last 10 years, not in the last four or five years we've been investing. They are seeing return on the investment they've made in the last 10 years. They've been doing this better than us. We are a young team. We are progressing rapidly. And it will take some catching up to do. Now, I, I still think we have a better team, but we do not have 
some star dust like Man City have. I just mentioned a while ago, Man City in certain games, even when they are struggling, Rodri can come up with a star moment. Uh, Bernardo Silva can come up with a star moment. Uh, Haaland can do that for them. The Arsenal team, we have to actually have a collective performance to, to win most games. We don't have players with star quality that can change the, the, the trajectory of a game immediately. We don't. Unfortunately for now, we don't. Liverpool, how many games have Liverpool struggled and Salah come in with clutch for them this season? How many players are in the Arsenal ranks and coming clutch for us in that moment? We do not. Or for Arsenal to win games, we have to have a, a collective performance all the time. You should understand that as an Arsenal, Arsenal fan, that we are trying, it's not yet there. For you to start saying, oh, the league started in, in, in August, please come up with a better argument. Come up with a better argument, please, please. You just want to be sad. Mm, just want to be sad. As of Heidi, I want to win trophies. Like, we don't want to, I want to win trophies, but I put things in perspective. I put things in perspective. I'm not saying you are wrong. All I'm saying, we want to win something this season, not next week. We want to win something. Oh, Lord. See, guy, I'm not angry at you. We're having a conversation. In my, my tone might come as, as if I'm aggressive. I'm not that I speak. I'm saying, just like you, I want to win, right? But you have to look at the perspective of how things are happening. You are facing a Man City who have, like I mentioned, Stardust players, clutch players, who can come up with clutch time for them. And in our Arsenal team, we have players who have to be collectively strong for us to get most results. If you look at the perspective of the last of that game, let's look at the last of that game we lost, right? Let's consider real quick. If Trussard had converted that chance, maybe the result is different. The first half, we had chances, right? Unfortunately, we didn't. We, we, we came out short. And the second half was dreadful. Aston Villa, objectively, was the better team in the second half. And they deserved their victory. Those kind of games happen. The West Ham game that we, we, we lost at the Emirates, uh, I think in December, we had the bulk of the of the possession. We played better. But unfortunately, they countered us and they scored. And we lost that game. I think it was 2-0 or 3-0. This is can happen. Guess what? Liverpool and Man City have such games. You know the only difference? They have clutch players that can change the trajectory of the game. I've seen Liverpool play poorly, but win based on clutch players. I've seen Man City play poorly this season, but win by clutch players. This thing happened. Even Sheffield United almost beat Man City. But guess what? Rodri came clutch for them. This thing happened. So put this in perspective. I want to win. You want to win. We Arsenal fans want to win. But we do not have to allow the fact that we want to win to override certain things that we cannot control. At least for now. Yeah, the Arsenal team is progressing. And I'm hoping in the summer we can add clutch players, world-class clutch players that can, when we are struggling, they can come in clutch for us. So you have to put this in perspective. And the season has not ended. This is not me being toxically positive. This is me putting this in perspective. You might not like that, but that's just the truth. The season has not ended. Yes, advantage Man City. I understand advantage Man City, but it doesn't mean Man City won't win it. Man City could still lose to Brighton. They could lose to Wolves. They could lose. It's two points, not 10 points, not five points, two points. All we can do to, is to continue to make sure we bounce back by trying to get a win at Alliance Arena today uh, and in Premier League, try to get a win and keep on moving. He is not done and dusted. He might be annoying. It hurts our ego as Arsenal fans that we're giving the advantage to Man City, but it's not done and dusted. It's not insurmountable. Two points is not insurmountable in this league. All Man City, if Man City gets a draw, we are back because we have superior goal difference. So how am I toxic positive when I'm saying what is logical and rational? How is that toxic positivity? All these woke words we just throw around. Hey, come on. I am not toxic positive. I'm just stating the facts and the objective truth that it's not done and dusted. But at the same time, I understand it's advantage Man City. Advantage Man City doesn't mean you're going to win it. Okay, I hear you. CZ is still on. I think we have a tougher fixture. Okay, let me ask you. Who was expecting us now between the Brighton game and the Aston Villa game? What, what game seemed harder to most Arsenal fans? I'm sure a lot of Arsenal fans dreaded the Brighton game more than the Aston Villa game because we struggle against Brighton more than Aston Villa. Guess what? We dispatched of, uh, uh, of Brighton easily, and unfortunately, we lost to Aston Villa. These things happen. 
on paper. See, on paper, yes. Okay, Liverpool had on paper the easier game. How come they lost Crystal Palace? Because people always thought, oh, yo, oh, we, we asked them as if they had a fixture on paper. But in the spirit of the game, things can happen. Things can happen when it comes to the spirit of the game. So I'm not going to fall for the mainstream narrative. Oh, Arsenal had a fixture on paper. I agree. I'm not silly. It, 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 it looks like that on paper. But when you play the game, things can be different. I saw the Brighton game as a tougher game than the Aston Villa game. Yeah, so we beat Brighton easily, right? We beat Brighton away easily. And unfortunately, we lose at home to Aston Villa. These things happen. That's not being toxically positive. That looking at things perspective. Even though City have the seemingly easier fixture, they could still lose. Don't forget, we play two Premier League games before City play their next Premier League game because they are, they are still in the FA Cup. What, what, now, nah, City might have the experience, but pressure could get to them. So, yes, advantage City, but it is not done and dusted. Don't be gaslit by this. AFTV people, don't be gaslit by fans who are just going on panels to, to argue so that they can get traction on your channel. I understand YouTube can be entertainment, but entertainment and logic can go hand in hand. So it is not done and dusted. It is not done and dusted. I'm not giving up on my team with two points behind with superior goal difference. See, that means if City gets a draw, we are back to the top if you continue to win our games. Because with this mindset, if you go with your mindset, the players should give up and say, oh, City are on top of two points, let's give up. We can't afford to do that. Continue to try to win your games. And if City drop points, you take advantage. That's what is logical and the most sensible thing to do at this point. I understand your frustrations. I'm not insensitive. I understand the, the banter, we need to win trophies. I understand that needs to win trophies. But we need to put things in perspective. Uh, shout out to BGD. Uh, to win trophies is not easy. We have been a good team. It will take time with a few good at signing. We can compete better next season. The boys lack ex still lack experience. Yeah, I understand the boys lack experience, but sometimes you need a tad of luck. See, everything you need a tad of, you need hard work and a tad of luck to work for you. So I am not giving up. Even today against Bayern, it's not over. It's not over. It is not even though at the Allianz Arena, we can go there and have a fantastic result. We can go there and pump Bayern. All these, oh, Bayern are a superior team on paper and in history. But the recent history of Bayern has not been a, the most palatable for us to revere that much. Why are we revering the present Bayern? The present Bayern is not the strongest Bayern. But do they have a better history than us? Sure. Do they have individual players who have star quality like uh, Sane, like, uh, what's his name, uh, Kimmich? They have quality players, right? Because when you play in the Premier League, and some chances that Sheffield United will not bury, or Brighton will not bury, a Bayern will bury. If you look at the, the, the game we drew 2-2 at, at home, that chance Bayern had and they scored, if, if that chance fell to maybe a, maybe even a Chelsea, Bayern not score, you, you get away with it. But when you play these top teams who are struggling collectively, but are brilliant individuals, they punish you. They will punish you. Yeah, I understand the boys lack some kind of experience, but I think uh, experience overly rated sometimes. If you have quality, you have quality. I like experience, but I like experience that comes with quality. Because, like, come on, there are a lot of players who have a lot of experience, but they don't have quality. So you have to have a healthy balance of experience and quality. I just think sometimes, uh, uh, like, if, if, in my opinion, Raya doesn't start that mistake that Gabriel Magales makes a blunder, we don't consider first goal, right? Now, the second goal, if Kivio was turned easily, I get it, and he fouls the player, maybe don't consider the second goal. So, is that experience, big day, or players not taking responsibility? That's why I remember the days of the beginning of time where Masses were winning <coughs> trophies. We saw Fernandinho actually commit a lot of technical fouls. City were committing a lot of technical fouls that have led to goals by the opposition. That's why I was kind of mad at Kivio. Yes, he was spawned and easily beaten. Take him down. Take one for the team. Take one for the team. But sometimes, maybe that's what Big J talk about, calling lack of experience, which might be so. But sometimes, what we blame on collective uh, of the players or the managers sometimes is players making bad choices individually sometimes. That's how I see it. 
Arsenal needs to take control of the remaining game, start uh, starting with winning, starting with tonight in Germany. Uh, always note that we fall off in April for the past three seasons. That needs to change. Now, there's context to that. I understand what you're saying we always fall off in, in April. But remember, the other times has been injuries. We are lucky this time. We do not have significant injuries apart from your timber. So I'm saying when we look at things in history, can we, if we have the opportunity of adding nuances and context to it, let's add the nuances and context to it. The last three times we fell off, there were significant injuries. Remember, it was uh, uh, we brought in Rob Holding to play for for Ben White. The last time we when we lost and Tottenham Court of the Champions League, we had significant injuries. Last year, Soliba and Tomias were out, right? But this year, it's going to be different because the quality players are still in there. See, people were saying that Arsenal always implode or fall out at a certain period of time. Have you looked at the, re- the key reason why they always fall out at that time? These are significant injuries that you cannot control. <laughs> See, City has been lucky the fact that their significant players don't get injuries at significant part of their season. That's luck. That is major luck that their significant players don't get those kind of injuries at that time. Unfortunately, for the last few years, Aston always get players out. But fortunately, this year, it's looking like we don't have any significant injuries to our squad at this time. And I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So that narrative is not totally true. When you peel it back and look at it objectively, that narrative is not totally true. And with today, and I, I agree with you, we have to take control and we have to win. We have to win tonight. And, and I think we have the quality of the squad to win. One bad game doesn't make it a bad squad or a bad team. One bad game does not. Does not. Does not at all. Shout out to uh, Jeffrey Gay. We need a higher quality score. I don't think higher quality score. It's time for us to add one or two star dust, in my opinion, to the players. Because having a quality team is great. Now, let, 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 let's, for those of you that actually saw the Invincibles, right? Or watched the Invincibles. The Invincibles will not be invincible without Henry or Bedcam and Vieira. Now, it doesn't mean the rest of the players are not quality, but those that, those are the the, the star does that. There were games in the Invisible that if Henry did not play, there, there is no way we would have had Invincibles. There were tight games that Henry were decided by Henry. Right? There were tight games that were decided by the star does. That is what Arsenal does not have. Now that I said, I kept on saying it. You can check my catalog and my library and see in the video. I have never said Martinez is world class or Saka. Because this day we just throw the word world class loosely. Because they're not world class. Are they top class players? Yeah, they're not world class. World class players can decide a game by themselves, i.e., Mbappe, Messi, Ronaldinho. Right? They can decide a game when it's, it's, a, it, it, it's a great luck by themselves. And we do not have that in our team or in our squad right now. <clears throat> we don't have that in our squad right now. And you cannot dismiss that because there'll be tight games. There will be times that the game will be extremely tight and you need somebody that can decide those games. And we don't have that in our ranks at the moment. So, as Arsenal fans, I'm not saying let's be blind loyal to our team. I'm, I don't do blind loyalty. I'm not stupid. But at the same time, I take things in perspective. I take things in perspective. Uh, fighting for the title and being in the quarterfinal of Champions League, I think we need to be more mentally prepared because. They have the talent. No reason to lose to Villa. Yes, I see. I'm, I'm agreeing with you, Biggie. There was no need to lose to Villa, but we lost. And I was disappointed. If you watch my stream, I called them both two jobs too. Like I was, very, I was disappointed at the way we lost because in the context of it's a title race, you should offer for it. But sometimes, especially the second half, the way we were lethargic, the way we showed no spirit, I don't know what happened in the second half. I do. I cannot explain. Only Ateta can explain, or sorry, can explain what happened in the second half. I do not know what happened to us in the second half. I do not have that. What happened in the second half? I don't know what happened. It's like we lost our way. It's like we're fatigued. It's like we're leggy. It's like we're playing with leaded boots. I do not know what happened in the second half. The first half, we missed a litany of chances, which should have convert, converted. Now, if you have converted those chances, it's easier to actually play second half and control the game, even though you might be mentally or physiologically tired. 
you will be able to control the game. But when it was a 0 0, you are giving the impetus back to Aston Villa, and he did that. So today, against Bayern, we cannot allow the Bayern to have the impetus. We cannot allow Bayern to have the impetus. But I think we have quicker players, uh, younger players, but the experience might not be like on the same power, same level with Bayern, but we can manage the game properly. And if we score first, let's manage the game properly because Bayern will throw everything at us, the kitchen sink, everything. Let's manage the game properly today. No room for errors. Manage the game. If you can get the second, get it. If you can't get it, keep it and keep them at bay. But this rush to go and get second, do not do that. We, we showed our lack of experience against Porto at, at the Dragao, where Martinelli was trying to win it at the dying embers of the, of, the, of the game when he didn't need to push it. And guess what? We lost that game. Fortunately, we recovered by beating them without penalty to qualify for the quarterfinals. At the Emirates against Bayern, we scored the first goal. We were in a rush to score and score the second goal. I made that mistake and it considered it 1 1. They scored maybe 2 1. And fortunately, we could make it, get an equalizer. We couldn't win the game. Today, get the first goal if possible. Don't be in a rush to get the second goal. If your opportunity offers offer itself, score the second goal, lock it up. But see, I will take a boring 2 0. All this excitement. I want to be excited, but there's context to excitement. When it gets to the Champions League quarterfinals, sometimes excitement out of the window. Just win the game. Just win the game. For today, I just want to win today's game. Excitement can be can wait. Let's just win the game. City have bought two high quality players for every position. That's a difference. Uh uh, that's different compared to us. Yeah, kind of like they have Haaland. Who might not be the most aesthetically pleasing? I won't call him a world class player, but I call him a world class scorer, which he does. He scores a lot. Uh, they have Bernardo Silva, who can change the course of a the game. They have De Bruyne, who can change, even though I think he's declining. I, I stick to that, but can still change the course of a game. They have players who can change the course of a game by themselves. But how many players in the Arsenal ranks can change the course of the game by themselves? Not collectively. Arsenal players can change. Arsenal squad can change the course of the game collectively. But individual players, that was like people shouting, Saka is world class. Shut your, shut your mouth. Saka is world class. Does he have good games or world class moments? World class moments doesn't mean you are world class. Saka can have world class moments, but he's not world class. He's not. And I stick to that. Masani has had world class moments. Is it world class? No. So that, that is what it is. Arsenal do have no world class player in our ranks, but do have very good players, top class players. Yeah, we do. But what class players? No. Even Soliba and Gabriel, even sometimes, but it's, oh, they are world-class defenders. They are on the verge of getting their cause of They defend very well. One, they, they are the best pairing objectively right now. They are, very, they are that top class, almost getting to world class in, def, in, in their defensive attributes. But attacking-wise, we are not there. Even all the guy I respect him, all the guy I think is a clever, brilliant number 10. But would I call him world-class? Uh, no. Nah. Not at the moment. Uh, we lost to Villa because we were weak defensively on the left, Zinchenko, playing Havas in the midfield, and Jesus up front, who he admitted is not a goal scorer. Now, let, let, let's unpack that, right? And I like your question, even though we might disagree sometimes, but I like your question. See, this is not a coaching, but I like the, the fact that you can challenge my opinion and we can challenge each other. Shout out to you. I have no, 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 no uh, personal vendetta against you. I might come out a bit strong in my tone, but we're just trying to have a conversation as men. So, uh, and I hope you understand. Now, remember the game against Luton, right? That we won. We made five changes. I remember the press conference was very significant to me because when Mikel Teta was asked that, oh, you made five changes and you, we still made light of us. And Luton, and he said something that, that is very profound. He said, if the result was different, people will come at him for making five changes. Because the result we won, nobody, nobody's complaining. See, I would not... Because I, I I don't think our loss is because of the changes. I think our loss was because we missed our chances in the first half. That I'm sticking by that. I'm not saying the changes did not make some things different. I'm saying our loss was because we, did, we were not clinical in the first half. If Trossard has scored that chance, Jesus gave him, maybe the result have been different. If Jesus actually headed the ball to... Kai or Trossard in the middle, sort of trying to score him or glory home by himself, maybe the result have been different. So it's not about the changes 
against Aston Villa. I just think we just uh, lost the plot, especially in the second half against Aston Villa. It's not the changes for me. Some of you might disagree. I'm looking at it holistically. It's not the changes because we had chances in the first half. So if it was the changes, how can we have chances that if we had buried, the trajectory of the match would be different? I would only agree to that notion, right? If we did not have no chances in the first half. We had chances in the first half and we fluffed those chances in the first half. So it's not the changes for me. But I, I see your point. And I understand Zinchenko is clumsy. I'm not going to defend Zinchenko can be clumsy, but he is not the horrible person. And also, would you prefer Kivio to play as a left back than Zinchenko? No, I'm still taking a Zinchenko over Kivio. I would prefer Tomiyasu if he's fit. But if Tomiyasu is not fit, there is nowhere in hell or in heaven I'm taking Kivio as left back over Zini. Oh, I'm taking Kivio as left back oh, 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 over Tomiyasu. He is not a left back. He's not a bad player. But as a left back, he can't do it. He can't do it. We need Rice, Jorginho, or the guy in the midfield. If that's what you want, it's not a bad midfield. Uh, I'll have preferred a party there for Jorginho. If party, if party is fit, I'll prefer a party there because party gives us a different kind of dynamism in that midfield. And he, he, yes, he has not been quicker than Jorginho since I've seen him since he came out from the injury in recent matches. Uh, sometimes those kind of uh, issues are due to not having a lot of match sharpness that can actually make you look slower than you should be. But well, I'll prefer the uh, party over Jorginho. But if party is not fit, I'll take a Jorginho. A rice and not the guy, he's not a bad mission. That mission should still be doing very, very well at the Alliance Arena and winning us the games. So it's not a bad mission. Uh, for tonight's game, okay, I get you. And uh, Tomiyasu, yeah, see, him. every rational, sensible, sane as fan will take Tomiyasu as a left back if he's fit. But if he's not, see, we've not seen him play 90 minutes this season, he has never played 70 minutes. Sorry, I'm not saying as in since the turn of the year, rather since 2024. Tomiyasu has not even played. 70 minutes for us. so we don't know what's going on we don't know whether he's fit or not there's a reason why he hasn't played that much for us so but if Tomiyasu is not fit right i'm asking you unkula who will you play kivio or zinchenko i want to know if Tomiyasu is not fit to play 90 minutes today who would you rather have kivio or zini i, I like guys i'd like to know i, I would love to know who will you guys who will you guys play because i am going i'm still going for zini I'm not happy with Zini, but he's lesser of the evil than Kivio. He's lesser of the evil than Kivio. Fair enough, we miss chances. I blame players for that, not the manager. Exactly, we're saying the same thing. So if, because you, you, your, your message said we made changes, right? That made, that, because look, let me, let me post your message. You said this, right? <clears throat> we lost to Villa because we're weak defensively on the left. I played Havas in the midfield and Jesus up front. But what I'm saying is that those were not the reason why we lost. Those changes didn't make the team weaker. Those changes seem like that. You, you come to that conclusion because we lost the match. Forgetting that if we've converted our chances in the first half and won the match, you'll say the same thing. So we need to be very objective and look at things in perspective. But I, if you look at those things in perspective, you 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 look at it and say, mm, if we converted our chances in the first half, there is no way we lose that match, and we are complaining about those changes. Like Luton game, the character admitted, if we had not had that result against those things, all the fans would shout, "Why did you make the changes? Why did you rotate?" Rotation is always good when you win. When you rotate and you don't win, suddenly the fans will come at you. Oh, you didn't win because you rotated too much. Sometimes it's not it's not totally true. It is not. That's why we have to look at things ourselves and think for ourselves and look at it. Now, after the match, I understand everybody is emotionally charged, everybody's angry. Sima down, calm down, and look at things in proper perspe perspective before you make certain as a session and assessment. So I do not believe it was a we lost the match because of changes. I don't believe we lost the match because we did not take our chances, especially in the first half. Especially in the first half. So I know you are not blaming the manager, but some people are blaming the manager. The players not miss those chances. Trossard, who was one of the most clinical player in the squad, missed a glorious chance that have changed the game. So it is what it is. 
appreciate your content. You're fairly bound without shouting every time, as you said before. Too many fan channels shout and scream to get clicked. Shout out to you. I see. I just tried <clears throat> try to do my best <clears throat> to be as objective as possible. I'm not going to be pandering to Arsenal and Ateta. At the same time, I'm not going to come and be skating the team all the time when I can look at things and put them in perspective. I was hurt by the, the loss against Villa, extremely angry, but I had to just calm down as an adult and look at things in perspective that mm, uh, is a bad loss, but we're just two points behind. Yes, it's City. It's hard to you know display City, but it's not impossible. And in six games, a lot can happen, provided we keep winning our matches. And let's not forget, we have superior goal difference. So if City draws a match and we win our matches, we are back on top. So you have to look at things in perspective and say that it's not totally done. It was, if it was four points or five points, maybe you can start shouting, it's done and dusted. Two points, meaning just one draw. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. It's still, it, come on. Nah. 100% fit party start. Of, exactly. For me, party is 100% fit. He has to start. If party is fit, for me, it's the first name on the team sheet. He has to start. Without Tommy, I'll play Kivio. Such a hard question. You play Kivio? With, <laughs> come on. Did you, did you see? Okay. Did you watch objectively Kivio against City? If not for Jesus defensively helping Kivio, who have been skinned severely and will have lost that match. Did you see Kivio against Bayern? Now, to, to know that you're not being totally honest, Nkola, how come... <clears throat> In the second half, we took out Kivio and brought in Zini and we became a, be a better balanced team. Mm -mm. If you are going to play Kivio over Zini, which is your personal preference, and I understand it's your opinion, right? But the objective notion is that if Kivio was that great, but struggled, he struggled in the first half and we brought in Zinchenko to calm it down. You, can, you, can't say, you, you, there, you cannot say that. You cannot say that. I'm, I'm not saying both options are great options. Kivio and Zini are not great options, right? I get it. They are not great options. But if Tomiyasu is not fit, which one is the lesser of the evil? Zini. As clumsy as Zini can be, he can do a better job. As a left back, better than Kivio. One more time. As clumsy as Zinchenko can be, he is going to do a better job than Kivio. As a left back, this is not no shade on Kivio. I think Kivio is a better player as a center half. Yeah, as a center half, the better player. But as a left back, Kivio is a liability. Now, we won games with him. Against what kind of teams? See, we said well, we're winning games. And I agree we're winning games. In the Premier League, he wasn't playing <laughs> the likes of uh, uh, Coleman every weekend. Kivio wasn't playing against like say, Gnabry or Sane. So we, 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 we can't we can't do that. <laughs> Come on, guys, we can't do that. We can't do that. So shout out to everybody that have been here for the stream, and a special shout out to I, I can't pronounce your name. Is I'm sure you're South African. Selo, I call you Selo Unkula. Shout out to you for actually making it very interactive. It started as if like <laughs> I almost called you a hitter. Uh, I, I don't mean calling you a hitter. I just think you have some strong oppositions. And I, and I understand that. And we have to go back and forth and debate it. Which is, this is an echo chamber. You can always debate things uh, like men and disagree and agree on certain things and look at the logic and the objectivity. Shout out to you for making it interactive. Shout out to Jeffrey Gay. To shout out to you too. Shout out to Beggy Day for always showing up. Shout out to you too. Shout out to uh, <coughs> Mr. Fosa, my very good friend. Shout out to you too for coming this morning, for making it interactive. And Mr. Big overnight shout out to you all of you for actually spending your time here with us uh mr Oximoto coming late good morning president being a while shout out to you Oximoto. being a while i understand life can happen we're always very very busy so i get it so guys if you're watching a playback be kind enough to strike the like button uh very very important uh strike the like button uh, consider subscribing yet subscribe and make sure you turn on your notification bell so you can get notified when i'm going live or i or I upload pre-recorded streams because I'll be uploading pre-recorded streams sometimes and I'll be going live sometimes too.
Uh, Kivio only, only, only recently struggled. Zinia has been costing us since Liverpool's last season. Kivio is just lesser evil. Kivio has not recently struggled. We have been getting away with it. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll expose this. <coughs> Sorry, I'm struggling a little bit of a call. The full arm game we lost at Kevin Cottage. Kivio was the weak, was the weakling. He was the chink in our armor. Kivio has not recently struggling. He, we've been getting away, away with it with lesser teams. I'm not saying Zinchenko too has not been struggling and be giving some un unsavory performances. I agree. Both players are not as not standard to of where we are going to. I agree with you. Give you has been struggling as a left back, but he we get away with it because we are not being punished. But against a Bayern or a Real Madrid, even a Man City, you will be punished. You get it? Go and watch those games. Like Fulham, Kivio was, he had to be changed too. Kivio is that, he is not a left back. His height, his pace, he's not a left back. So I understand what you're saying. We both agree. Kivio, Asa can do better than Kivio and Zini. Asa should be doing better than them. And unfortunately, uh, what is his name? Timba is not available. If Timba was available, this debate is done and dusted. Timba slots in immediately. Timba will just slot in immediately. But unfortunately, Timba is injured at the moment. So, for me, I just think Zini is the lesser of evil than Kivio because he's quicker, he's shorter, he's clumsier, but he's better on the ball than 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 than, than Kivio. So Kivio is not a horrible player, but as a left back, he struggles. So we, we have to understand that. We have to just understand that. Uh, shout out to you too, Macho Chat over here. Hit the like button. Shout out to you. Like I said, we might have disagreed at the beginning, but like I said, it's mature chat and men can be a little bit passionate about what we are having conversation about. It doesn't mean we hate each other. Or even though when I do a video, I react to the light of Cottage Show, who say some outlandish things. I don't hate them. I'm just pushing back on the narrative they're pushing. It's not hate. I don't know not personally. I don't know Turkish personally. It's not hate. It's just that you cannot say certain things that is untrue, that is not backed up with logic and fact. And nobody should push back. YouTube is an open space. So you can't push in something that, not, that might not be correct and you push back. And you pushing back on things you think I'm saying that is wrong doesn't mean you hate me. We can debate it logically, debate it as adult, like you said, as a mature chat. Shout out to you too. So great chat from you. Shout out to you. Uh, we have been, <laughs> we have beaten a month before second leg uh, 2 0, even though it wasn't enough to qualify. Uh, no more a way go exactly. We've beaten them before. I remember that time. Yeah, we've been there before. That I'm saying, say even with that time, we beat them with a, they had a stronger team than this team they have now. Individually, they still have some quality players, like uh, we know today. Uh, I think Sunny is still fit to play. Uh, Mula can be dangerous. Harry Kane, who loves a customary penalty against us, is going to be playing. So, we have to make sure we do uh, behave ourselves. I think we'll win this match. Provided, provided we do not see my problem with Arsenal sometimes is the way we self sabotage. If we don't self sabotage, we will win today's match. We will win today's match. I think we we'll win this match. But I understand your concern. Those are things that is done and dusted. I understand your concern, and I can't, I can, I might not do enough to change your minds and hearts. But I think we have enough quality in that team to go to Bayern and beat them, either a smash and grab or comprehensive domination of the team. Is, is, is doable so guys that'll be it for now an hour shout out to everybody that has made this stream what it is uh i appreciate all of you all of you i do appreciate you for your comment for your time i do appreciate you i'll be here tomorrow morning to do uh hopefully a comprehensive review of a victory and we'll be celebrating and laughing uh whatever the result be whether a win or a loss hopefully I'm hoping it's a win. I'll be here tomorrow to discuss that and do a comprehensive review. Uh, like the video on your way out, subscribe, and make sure you turn on your notification bell. Very, very important. Uh, and I'll be seeing you guys on the next one. Shout out to Oximato for the last message. I'll see you guys tomorrow, same time, same channel. Bye for now.